This is a Rotke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rotke of Rotke Mods, and welcome to episode 23 of my Mac Pro series. In this episode, I am just continuing episode three and a half's coverage on how much RAM a Mac Pro 1,1, 2,1 can actually use. I have finally gotten back to 32 gigabytes worth of RAM on my Mac Pro. There are some drawbacks though, and I am considering going back to 16. Even though this system has the 32 gigabytes back thanks to four 8 gigabyte DIMMs of RAM, the system has some problems now. The reason why I believe that it is said that the max it can support is 32 gigabytes worth of 8 times 4 gigabyte DIMMs is because the system has some issues running these four 8 gigabyte DIMMs. I bought these 8 gigabyte DIMMs really cheap though, so either way, if I end up deciding to go back to 16 gigabytes worth of RAM, it's not going to really hurt. I got these for an incredible deal of $25. And these specific RAM go for 45 or more, usually around $60 on eBay. So I got a great deal and I'm not upset really if I have to go back. But the problem is with this system now it seems to have messed up a lot of the sensors, which I believe will be alleviated by going back to the 16. The RAM itself, I believe actually the sensors are right on. They run about five degrees Celsius hotter on average, especially under load. Also, the CPUs, according to the sensors, are running 10 to 15 degrees hotter, which I don't believe is right. In fact, from what I can tell, they are running at the same temperature they were. So it has thrown the sensors off some. Plus the SMC has decided it doesn't like having these eight gigabyte DIMMs in it. And the second the system starts going under any load, the fans ramp up in speed quite significantly. This system, uh, the way it's set up, each RAM tray goes to a specific CPU. RAM tray A, which I don't have installed because of the RAM controller problem, goes to CPU A, and RAM tray B goes to CPU B. These CPUs are designed to use 32 gigabytes each, but because of the extra load going on to CPU B, because CPU A has no RAM connected to it, it's causing some issues that I really can't explain. Um, but I figure it's because of having so much RAM on one CPU. The system seems to load quicker, slightly quicker, and I have tested it and I can utilize all 32 gigabytes worth of RAM. But between the fan ramping up and the other issues, I don't know if it's really worth it. I am seriously considering going back to 16 gigabytes, but I am still not sure what to do about it yet. And these RAM sticks seem to have the same type of heat spreaders on them as the former sticks that I have. So I understand why they might be running hotter because there's literally twice the memory per each module and that would cause some more heat issues. All of this aside, even though it seems to load a bit quicker, I think it's still bogging down the CPU some because when 32 gigabytes is spread out across all eight slots instead of just four, the performance on Geekbench is actually higher. But when we have the 32 gigabytes on just four slots on one CPU, Geekbench actually has a slightly worse score as when it had 16 gigabytes in it. I'll show you real quick. This is the 32 gigabyte results compared to the 16. It's really not different at all, um, but it should actually be higher. Every time I've run this test, it has come out around 11,496, where this is 11,505. And if we look 
32 versus 16. I believe it's just because the CPU is being bogged down. So is it really worth doing the 32 gigs or is it? I'm not sure. The whole system's just crazy. <laughs> it's all I can really describe it as. It's, it's acting funny. Um, it works fine. It's totally stable. But I just don't think it's worth it. So is it worth going to 64 gigabytes of RAM if you do? I have a feeling that it would still have the same problems I have with my system if you went to 64 gigabytes. Because even though I'm 100% positive now that you can, 64 gigabytes is a lot for this system to handle. And I don't think it would work right. It would still work perfectly fine, but you'd have the problems I'm having with it overheating. It thinks it's overheating. It's not, which is the weird thing. It seems like it's being bogged down some, even though it seems quicker, it may just be a placebo effect. It may actually be running slower. I'm not really sure. I haven't tested it past the fact that I realized that, that it does seem to be having some issues that I don't know if I'm happy with. I'm thinking of going back to 16 gigabytes worth of RAM, but I am excited right now that I did get back to 32 and it works. So I have decided to re-upload this video and insert this in between the two original parts of the video. I wanted to briefly explain to you that I decided to go back to 16 gigabytes worth of RAM because I figured out that the cons outweighed the pros. And in fact, I figured out that the value of diminishing returns, it just wasn't worth it between all the funky things that were going on with my system, it had to go back to 16 gigabytes. And if you read in the description, I go into much more detail about it. So if you want to upgrade to 64 gigabytes worth of RAM, I really wouldn't recommend it. I'd stick with the 32 gigabytes. And like I said, you can read more about that in the description below. I just wanted to insert this in here so you understand not to do it. Anyway, back to the original video. On a last note, I did find out one other thing that I probably figured out why my RAM controller shorted out. The previous owner decided to upgrade the Mac like I stated in episode two when I introduced it. They put in these modules right here in the top tray. This was tray A. One of these modules have to have probably something wrong with them. I believe one of them's probably sending a bit too much voltage into the board, which eventually caused the RAM controller to fry. Because when I originally had just ordered the 32 gigs worth of RAM, I was going to sell my eight modules of 32 altogether on eBay and just use these modules right here in the system to have six gigs worth of RAM until the 32 kit came in the mail. Well, the system kept having issues where it just would eventually freeze up and crash. First applications wouldn't open and then it would just shut off and then restart. And sometimes it didn't start at all. It would start up post, start loading, and then shut off again, and start back up. And the errors kept saying that there was a RAM fault. And from what I could tell, it was probably a voltage problem coming from one of those modules. And luckily, I figured this all out before I fried the other RAM controller and had a giant, heavy aluminum paperweight. Anyway, so I think I finally understand why this Mac died originally for the original owner. And it's not that huge of a deal. I still have the other RAM controller. And even if I go back to 16 gigabytes worth of RAM, I'm fine with it for now anyway. If worse comes to worse, I'll just order a new logic board to go back to 32. Because even though it's nice to have 32 gigabytes worth of RAM, 16 is okay for me right now, even though I do do some RAM intensive processing, 16 hasn't really bogged me down, and I can get away with it. Anyway, 
So I just wanted to cover that, yes, I am back to 32 gigabytes worth of RAM. No, I'm probably more than likely not going to stay with the 32 gigabytes of RAM. And no, I don't think it's really worth going to the 64 gigabytes worth of RAM if you decide to. I'd recommend just staying with the 32 split across all eight slots. This is pretty sketchy, and I don't know if I'd like my Mac running the way it is now. So that is the end of this episode, and thank you for watching. This has been a Rutke Mods video.